We got one week until the UFL kicks off. We got radio broadcasts, final cuts, all that and more on episode 79 of the UFL podcast. One, two, three. back everybody to another amazing edition of the ufl podcast i'm the rep representing pro football newsroom the leaders in spring football news and boy oh boy oh boy oh boy oh boy do we got a big week for you but before we get started i'm joined as always by my man zach kyleman how you doing today, my friend? Ooh-wee, we're in the single digits, baby. We are on the final stretch, as they say, and it is feeling pretty good. A lot of stuff coming together. A lot of final pieces to the finish line being thrown out. Man, it's uh, been it's been a fun few weeks. Uh, and uh, yeah, I would say everything, the tapestry is being woven to its final completion uh, is yeah, it's like I said, we're under we're under double digits. We're in the single digits now. It's eight days as of uh, this episode dropping. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be a good time. I can't believe basically, we're almost there. Basically, a week away, not just from kickoff, Zachy boy, but a week away from spring stock three. Oh yeah, two day event, March thirtieth. Come and join us at the kickoff in Arlington, Texas, where we're gonna watch. The XFL champions take on the USFL champions, the Arlington Renegades and the Birmingham Stallions, and these two fools right here, plus many more at Spring Stock 3. And here's some more deets. Lot L, get there fresh and early, 9 a.m. Central is when we're kicking off the show. Maybe, you know, maybe a little bit early, maybe a little bit late, but around 9 a.m. Central. And hey, if you can't make it to Arlington, we get it. Make sure you can watch it online. Come and join us. But yeah. this is a good reason to subscribe. Click the bell. You'll get morale. And you'll also know whenever we're going live, just like Mondays with Around the UFL, and probably just like our show next week for episode 80, Zach. It always works out. Episode 80, going wow. into the new season. We're probably going to be live. Zach and me are going to be together in Houston. Maybe we'll be here. Maybe we'll be in a special, special location. Uh, but one week away from spring stock. And that's just day one, March 30th. But March 31st, we're slapping some swingers on the Tesla. We're heading down to Houston to Rice Stadium to, ta- to go see the Houston Roughnecks take out the Memphis Showboats. And, of course, our sponsors, Vintage Mar- Varsity, They might not want to sponsor this event after all of this smack talk that I've been doing about the showboats. But here's the deal. I do think the showboats are a strong team. They're just not the roughnecks. But join us for day two exclusively at Tailgate. We're going to be having fun. We're going to be having a good time. Join us at Rice Stadium. The biggest party of the spring returns again. Another Mm two-day event. Uh, Man, Zach. And Houston, Texas, all of it. It's going to be good. Oh my goodness! I, I've been uh, ever since ever since last week, and it's kind of starting to hit that we're that my vacation for this is coming up. It is uh, it's gonna be feeling really really sweet. Uh, you know, you get to enjoy some football. It's not just for like we're doing the show. We get to go in multiple games th- and get to have a bit more of an expanded weekend, even more so than last year. Uh, man, I, I'm, I'm, I've been looking forward to this. I've been needing this, been needing this trip really bad. I think both of you and I just from mm-hmm. talking, have been needing a, a little bit of R and R, uh, with something like this. We so. don't need R and R. We need F B and B football, Bucky's and barbecue. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm and I'm ready sandwich for it. Oh, jerky. Dude, we're getting it. There's a Bucky's on the way to Dallas, to Arlington, and we're stopping there and we're getting it. And we're going to charge the refla there too. So hey, two birds, one stone. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm man, I'm looking it, forward to this. Yeah, it's a stop on destination. You got if you got a Tesla, you got to get at least 20 minutes in on that bad mm-hmm. boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 I'll be good. Yeah, slow down. 
That's recharge the car, recharge us because we got to leave early. See, this is the work that we put in for you fellas. We're leaving at like four in the morning uh, because it takes like three, three and a half hours to get there from where I'm at. Um, but we got to get there bright and early to set up and then we got to mm -hmm. cover the game and then we got to drive back and watch the other game and man, oh man. And then the next day, it's going to be a tough, not tough. Well, it'll be tough. It'll be a busy weekend, but it's going to be worth it, especially for that FB&B. Speaking of some some supporting of our endeavors, uh, one other thing, 10% off your, using Uf, USFL Newsroom for Breaking Tea. Uh, the official, one of the official partners of the UFL used to be also official partner for the XFL 2020 as well as the USFL last two seasons. Definitely want to get in some great merch those guys produce and uh, supports the show by using the code USFL Newsroom when you check out. And look, uh, I've, I've been looking, I'm scouring, I got to get my merch at some point. One thing I'm, that's kind of hurting me real quick. I really want that baby blue Michigan Panthers, uh, Under Armour t-shirt to go really well with this little comp. If mm -hmm. you could tell really would pop, but, uh, I gotta wait. It's pre-order. So can't get it week one. That's the only downside. Well, let me, Remember. let me try this. You know, I tried it with the usfl maybe the ufl will be different do me a solid if anybody's watching do me a favor put a ufl ref shirt on the shop hey if you want to send me one in the mail i ain't gonna stop you but i am not asking just throw it on the shop even if it's one person that buys it it'll be me and you know what if you do and you throw some more gtsq ufl merch i Thank will you. get my wife signed up on that i might get signed up on it especially Make it a ref GTSQ crossover. Sign me up. Make it happen, UFL. Make it happen, Dwayne the Flippin' Rock Johnson. All of you, get me? I just want, come on, ref shirt. Y'all know it. All right. I said my piece. I think we got a lot of news to talk <laughs> and about. I'm, and I'm done envisioning, and I'm done having to have people envision you in the ref shirt with like uh, freaking <laughs> leggings. <laughs> I mean, if that's what I got to do, that's what I got to do. Show off those calves. <laughs> that's right. That's right. They're nicer than you think. You'll see. Anyway, we got a lot of news to talk about. And, you know, yes, one of do. these things that I always hear whenever we, whether it was the AEF, the XFL, the USFL, and even the Spring League is, hey, I get it. These things are going to be on TV. But you know what? I'm kind of a radioholic. How do I fit into the mix? And you know what? The UFL's got you covered. And to me, this is this is kind of a nice deal across the board because you're getting all the games, you're getting them on Sirius, so you don't have to worry about interference, the the broadcast going in and out, you traveling across state lines. Again, Sirius, let's be honest, it's a real big deal for truckers, right? You don't mm -hmm. have to change the channels, you don't have to find new channels, you just have one channel straight shot the whole way through. And let's be honest, I would assume, maybe I'm wrong, but I would assume that if we look at the demographics of truckers that I would, I would guess that a lot of them enjoy the game of football, right? I think that's a good bet for most. Right? I think it's a good bet. Yeah. Probably. And to me, if anything, this just broadens the UFL's exposure. It's similar to what I always mentioned in the past about, you know, some of these, some of the people that you're going to get hooked are literally going to be people that are flipping through the channel and saying, Hey, what the hell football's on TV. You have now that same opportunity on Sirius Radio, right? And even to that, mm -hmm. to add on that, I saw that Memphis uh, for the second year, they have a local uh, radio broadcast partnership yeah. out there as well. Um, I would love to see that in all eight of the markets. Uh, but Zach, uh, I don't know. What are your thoughts on this? I know there's a couple more details if you want to run into that. Yeah. So look, uh, there's going to be how they're doing this. So Sirius XM um again it's really not only the it really is the main and only satellite radio company in existence uh it's form formulated from basically the old Sirius and XM companies coming into one and it's a pretty big partner in the space they've been expanding a lot recently you know podcasts besides the radio um hell I mean you know you're talking exactly what I'm talking where it's like you know if you got rental cars you got like all kinds of things it's special offer there's a lot of people that listen to it and it's usually supposed to be better quality radio mm -hmm. now with this instance and part of the uh release of this it specifies where these channels are at and i'm not shocked remember fox espn slash disney they're doing all the broadcasts so fox broadcasts are going to be on fox sports radio which you know 
from experience, you know, that is, they do everything, anything that they can, usually simulcasting the TV feed onto the Sirius XM channel for you to listen. Uh, ESPN, not 100% sure because I don't listen to as much of that. Um, and I haven't listened to much Sirius XM as of late, but I do know that ESPN Extra will broadcast at least the audio for those games. Now, what I did find interesting, um, and someone, you know, a few people brought this up because this is how Fox does it. And I don't know if ESPN does it this way, but we'll see. Mm-hmm. Is that, you know, again, they broadcast the TV feed. And, you know, some people went, well, it's kind of awkward listening to a, like Joel Klatt talk about, like, see, look at this on the field or like, look at this clip. Mm-hmm. And uh, while I do agree with that, yes, it is a little awkward if you're really thinking about it. Um, I think that it's not crazy to assume that that's going to be the case again, simply because it it's the best cost efficient matter of spreading an extra media outlet out to a consumer. So. Mm-hmm. Again, I don't know ESPN structure entirely. I know Fox does it like this. Yeah. Um, for a lot of their broadcasts, they generally just still simulcast the audio from the TV, and mm-hmm. I think that's fine. Most most of the time, you rarely should get confused with a game unless you join in at a weird spot. Right. So, I will yeah, say it's this fine. though. I will say this though. The wording is interesting, right? Because in the press release, it says UFL games broadcast by Fox Sports will be simulcast on Fox Sports Radio while games broadcast by ESPN will air on ESPN Extra. And again, no. maybe we're reading, so, again, this is very much could be reading into this too much. It could be the fact of, you know, you're doing comms, you don't want to use this, the word simulcast twice. I feel like if they're going to just air the TV broadcast on Fox, I, I would expect that's probably what's going to happen on ESPN but to me, that that wording does leave a little bit of wiggle room in there. So we will see. We will see, and maybe more information will come up, come out about this. Um, but right, you know, and who, uh, who knows? If they do do this again, if they do that, that's actually I'll that's an upgrade. Um, mm-hmm. Because the dedicated broadcast crews for radio, you know that that is an extra bit of uh, charm. It also makes it more radio centric. It's better to listen. A lot of radio broadcasters way more descriptive so that you can follow along if you're in the car. Uh, so, yeah, and not to mention that, you know, I still think it's a good it is a still an excellent art form and there are great people in the space. Uh, it's funny because Kevin Harlan, you know, as much as he is a fantastic NFL commentator, he is the top dog in the NFL radio space. And that man's voice, the way he describes plays the way he enunciates and does everything that makes it a little bit special. And he's mm-hmm. a proponent for this type of stuff. He says that, that and that football radio, essentially it's not going anywhere. And I don't think it will yet. Um, it's people like that that make it special. And I'll tell you one thing as well, because you know, some people I think last year and we've, we've talked about this in years past with like other entities, um, mm-hmm. you know, where, there have been deals for local radio, and some years there have not been local deals. Uh, the USFL did not have any local, uh, did not have any local deals year one, to be specific. Uh, and it did ruffle a few feathers in the space. And I think we're slowly seeing that change again, as long as it's stable and these companies can trust it. So, for example, you know, Memphis has kind of led the way in this mm-hmm. in a lot of cases. So, uh, shout out to uh, News Talk 98.9 Memphis for being a uh, partner, again, the Roar in Memphis, two years in a row, going to be broadcasting Memphis Showboats games on local radio waves. And I think that that's kind of the hope, is you're going to see more local broadcasters make deals again and start expanding out. Because really, if you can get those guys and get it trusted, you know, you want local pundits in your corner. Uh, and not only that, you can also then make natural occurring events and media pieces with that too. So like, remember how like Todd Haley used to have his coaches show mm-hmm. like that. Now yeah. I'm hoping, you know, D Filippo might not as much this year being in Texas, but those possibilities open up the more you can have that available. Arlington. I wish it's hard probably because the sports scene's crazy over in Dallas, mm-hmm. but you kind of hope somewhere, some way, maybe they can find their way to wriggle in. But for now, this is what the solution is, is it makes it easy say you can't listen in the car locally. Well, if you get Sirius XM and their rates are pretty reasonable a month, you know, I'm not saying, 
you know, hey, you got a budget, you got a budget. But if you really badly want to listen, you have outlets at yep. least. Like yep. you're guaranteed at least you can listen to something if you can't watch. <laughs> Well, and what's nice too is because, you know, with Sirius XM, they have kind of different packages. This mm -hmm. is included in the baseline package. So it's in the in card, good. it's in the streaming. It's so if you have Sirius XM already, you're getting this game. I know a lot of people, quite honestly, a lot of people that have Sirius XM get it for Howard Stern. So, I mean, they're already in the high, and, uh, I assume the highest package because. I, uh, I, <laughs> One of my core memories from last summer stock is driving around Canton <laughs> and listening to Howard Stern reruns. I don't know how we had satellite radio in that rental car, but I don't, sign I don't them up. I'll Dude, take it. Like we listened to the entire story of Shane Gillis and his SNL journey. Yeah. And yeah, now yeah. like and now ever since then, like I'll I'll follow Shane Gillis's career and like whenever the first time we heard that he total side scoop, like the first time we heard yeah. he was on SNL. And it's like, oh my God, this went full circle. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's crazy. We've never, we've never figured that out. If I didn't have that experience in the car on that faithful July, one of those faithful July afternoons. Yep. Yep. It's Good old real. free satellite radio. I, I've never had that before, and I don't know if I'll ever have it again. But it was, I accidentally hit the button, and it started working. I was like, oh, look at that! Sign me up. Yeah. Good perk. Yeah, you got a place to listen, though, people. It's not bad. And even like I said, I think. If you get dedicated broadcasters for one of these, I think that's a cherry on top. Personally, again, and keep in mind, cost, these guys do think about cost. I know cost cutting sometimes is not ideal for certain things because I do wish there were dedicated broadcasters at times, so like Fox in particular. Mm -hmm. But this is how this is. Media companies, you know, and again, an entity like this that they're trying to, hey, let's keep building, keep going. Some stuff you got to make you know, concessions on until you can uh, make that at least worth your while. Yeah. So just bear in mind, you know, there's reasons why stuff like this does happen or why decisions like that are made, you know, like it or not. <laughs> yep. 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 But, you know, we also have some other good news before we get into the not so fun news. Uh, mm -hmm. We have, I wouldn't say it's a new app. They updated the XFL app to the UFL. Yeah. Uh, I will say there were some hiccups along the way, but the one thing that I do love about the app, and this is the one thing I loved about the XFL app, the, the previous two seasons that they were around, having access to my tickets right there digitally and one stop yeah. it, along with all the news, all the scores, all the everything that I need right in one place. I will say I do miss the AAF app being able to like call it, you know, during the game, but I get it. We can't, you can't always get what you want. But to me, this is great. I'm glad it's there. I assumed we would have the app this year, but mm -hmm. here we are a week away, roughly. And now we have an update to the app. Thoughts? I mean, nothing spectacularly different. Nah, nah nothing crazy. Uh, it's honestly, I when this came out, I kind of forgot. And I went, oh, yeah, that's right. They, I guess they could have done an app. You know, they did kill both of the other ones off and were tinkering with the website. So I didn't think about it at the time, but uh, you know what? It, it looks crisp. I have the Android version. Um, mm -hmm. It runs really smooth. I know there were, I know that there were some, compl there were some minor issues with the USFL one when it launched back at the time. And as we've seen, you know, they're taking the best of each asset and they're kind of just picking and choosing. So like the XFLs has been, honestly, it's been the same core build with like new features since 2019, right. 2020. Yeah. Like they pretty much adapted the 2021 and just kept building on it. So kind of mm -hmm. made sense to just take it, reskin it, put all the new teams in and run with it. Cause it's, it's smooth. It's a good look. It's a good looking, easy to use application. And mm -hmm. that's what you need. You know, do I get my team page, you know, and again, I'm going to model it because the NFL network does some or NFL.com does a similar with their NFL app. You know, mm -hmm. do I get my team page? Do I get my home news page? Do I get my merch shop page, uh, ticket access, which, Yes, I mean, in a world of digital ticketing that is consistently growing as we uh, keep moving forward, uh, yeah, that's a big deal. And so ease of access to buy tickets, you know, that's what helps a lot. You know, if I can just make a few clicks and uh, put in some uh, bank information, I can buy myself a ticket to a game right away, then yeah, sign me up. So mm -hmm. yeah, not nothing crazy. I mean, yeah, the press release, honestly, this is one of those moments where they like, it made it bigger than like, if you didn't know then you're like, oh, wow, this is incredible. But if you knew, you're like, hey, nice. They updated the <laughs> they updated yeah. the application. You know, so cool stuff. It's a good looking app. Hey, modern uh, 
modern sports league stuff gotta give a thumbs up hey i'll take it like i said me i like having the one easy spot to have my uh my tickets without having to have another app i don't need mm-hmm. the Ticketmaster app i don't know what the Ticketmaster app is going to try to like sell my data to so you know what <laughs> sign them up i have rather either the ufl sell my data have fun with it have, you know go <laughs> go for it go um, go nuts send me sock ads i don't know <laughs> Yeah, I mean, GTSQ. You know what? I ain't no shame in that game. I ain't going to lie. Dude, one time I went to uh, PF Newsroom, which everybody should be doing daily for all the latest spring football news. Of course. Uh, I uh, I wish I would have got a screenshot. It never happened again. But I went there, and all the ads were GTSQ. I'm not. It was the GTSQ (laughs) XFL line. The ad ad choice followed you to a T. Why did I not take a screenshot of that? And I've ever I've tried to get it to do it again. I'm like, why did I? Oh, my God. Because that to me was the funniest. That's lost time. Anyway. Anyway. So, Mm. you know, you know, the the name of the game, we've been kind of leading up to this in the previous episodes, and especially with around the UFL. Although not all the cuts are here, some of the teams have started making their final cuts, and um, it's as you'd expect, right? There's some names that you wouldn't see, wouldn't expect to get cut. Uh, this is that final round. It's the it's really that the most competitive round. Who's mm-hmm. who's going to squeak in? Who's maybe not going to make the cut? Um, we're also seeing players decide to you know retire, step away. And we can even talk about that a little bit, too, uh, after we go through this. But I don't know. Do you want to jump into this list? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I have <coughs> some highlighted players uh, in particular. But, uh, look, it's, it's, a few, it's a few names you will recognize so far. Three teams have done cuts so far uh, that they just turn, essentially turned them in early is what it sounds like you know, they were set with their rosters. So uh, those three teams – include the Arlington Renegades, the DC Defenders, and the Houston Roughnecks. Um, Anthony Becht apparently has confirmed that uh, he's still planning, and it looks like other teams, unless this changes after the fact, are planning to still continue on that Saturday deadline cut uh, to be more thorough. But the these three roster, these three coaching staffs, they felt like, and, well, general managers, presidents, what you name it, they felt like their rosters were basically ready to go, and so they were given the option to put it in early. Remember, 23rd is the deadline. It's not that you need to have – it's not that you can – you have to put it in before that. You can put it in at that date. So this is what's happening. Uh, to go through this, a few key names uh, that caught my eye at least, and, uh, hey, feel free in the comments if you want to add in pieces of well. I'm not saying that because I missed this name, the person is uh, not as high priority. I am just – these are names that caught my eye and I was shocked to see on the list just off my own knowledge. So, um, so first things first, Manny bunch, all USFL right there. Uh, honestly, most, mostly remembered for uh first year safety, getting a massive hit against at the time again, yep. against, against uh, the Maulers. It, that one is one of the best memories of the 2022 USFL, but he also damn good safety for the gamblers last season. And, you know, kind of was shocked to see him show up on this list because of the fact just, I don't know, like we've seen a lot of all USFL guys drop off. Mm-hmm. I mean, first round of cuts were massive, but like, again, like here's another guy is on one of these all-star teams and he's not going to be showing up now. Hopefully he's going to clear, get on waivers. If not, he's already cleared waivers by now. Uh, I mean, Another one of the guy, these guys on our list I'll talk about momentarily did hit waivers and already got claimed. So I'm going to assume that Manny Bunch is not, and several of these other guys have already cleared the waiver wire to a degree um, if they have not been reported by the, by the same PR department at this time. So keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, Bunch, kind of shocked. And I mean, for you, you know, credit, I, w- I will say this is in your wheelhouse for your team. DC, I mean, Houston's already building a defensive staff. I, I mean, it, it's it's not even it's just shocking, defense, but it's Zach, so cu- it's even it, it's as cutthroat of a defensive battle on all those fronts in in Houston as it is for any team in the league. You know why we're all about twelve and zero? The O is also the n- amount of points that teams are going to put up on us this year. Sign <laughs> us up, all in, rough them up, dude. It's going to be so good. Speaking of which, Jarek Guarantino, Guarantano. I'm sorry, QB one. Let's get signed yep. up. Everybody, get excited about that. A lot of people thought it was going to be Reed Sinet, and I said I don't think it's going to be. And he's QB three. 
that well that was also me but yeah mm-hmm. i guess that but you know what it, it was a highly contested battle guarantano has a lot of hype around him uh being in an being in the nfl very mm-hmm. recently and you know we know how that goes if it's, if you're a recent nfl guy a lot of spring guys look at you like it's a freaking uh like you're a freaking gold gold star recruit so this is history you know. repeating itself my friend may i remind everybody of a little name pj walker mm. who came off I of see. a practice squad came into the roughnecks un flipping defeated five and oh you're unnamed xfl 2020 champions we all know it everybody knows it you can't deny it the roughnecks were the team to beat and, the, and just like they will be this year but they won't be beat 12 and 0 noted it's gonna be, good. It's gonna be fun <laughs> I, if any, if anything, we'll we'll get into deeper talk on this when all the rosters out. But I, I think this is a great way to do this with each one of the cut rounds because basically, the way I have this set up for our notes is we're doing like I, I put basically players that caught my eye that got cut, and mm. then I've gone team by team. So like, here's the deal: final roster now for the Roughnecks. I think we'll we'll do this for each one. We've mm. talked our bit our big players or no, names aren't here now. Final thoughts on your roster as a whole. Now, credit one other note the best mark thompson sprain knee injury it sounds like he'll be fine he'll be out okay. there he, he's the ringer this is part of the plan zach you go nine and oh without thompson mm. and then you go into the playoffs and everybody think they found your weakness by then no 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 here comes mark thompson off the bench and i don't even think it's going to take till the playoffs dude this guy is like superman Unless that sprain was caused by kryptonite, I, I'm telling you, I think we're going to see this dude back out there. Let me not remind you, he missed the first game last year. Did that stop him from running no. it up and putting in the most touchdowns? Hell no, it didn't. And it ain't going to stop him this year. Yeah, he'll be back. It's it's uh, it's an injury year can come back. I just hate, you hate to see another top running back go out before mm-hmm. the season starts like this. Uh, it's good that he comes back. Uh, my uh, my quick takes on the r- next roster, and again, we'll do a little bit more of a one, but just like quick as we're seeing the cuts, and now it's official fifty mans. Mm-hmm. Um, just like I talked, we've talked about in all seriousness, heavily defensive built roster. I mean, there there are good pieces on offense that I think Guarantano can take advantage of. Yes, you don't have Mark Thompson receiving core though. I've always loved Justin Hall, former Ball State Cardinal, but he's also a hard-nosed pass catcher. Really runs and hits hard after he get, after the catch. Isaiah Henney, similar deal, you know, they're both about I think they're both very similar builds and it kind of shows a bit of toughness and grit like the teams have mentioned here. Both of those guys in the slot, Kurt Merritt, Steve Dunbar, I don't think those are bad bad pickups. Kiki Chisholm, you know, Anthony Ratliff, not too shabby. So they got options. Um, but this is defensive built when you have Adam Rodriguez and Chris Odom being your two starting edge rushers. And again, Odom finished number one in 2022. Rodriguez has been top three in sacks two years in a row in the USFL. Um, kind of an underrated name as an edge rusher coming in to some people's regard. Uh, not a bad combo. Same for Ruben Foster, Gabriel Sill being linebacking options. And again, that's safe. Those secondary players like they are loaded at both cornerback and safety Mm -hmm. it still shocks me manny bunch got let go but again you look at the names here and i'm like the same this again defensively they should be one of the most sound in the league and on paper it it shows it it straight up shows Mm -hmm. which i always say defense wins championships and this isn't even me being biased this is actually something i've said before the roughnecks just so happen to have the best defense in the UF flipping L. Uh, mm-hmm. So, yeah, no, I think we are going to be a hard team to beat. In, and you know what? That's the thing with spring leagues. They're like almost these offensive showcases for the, you know, the teams that can show out. But if there's a good defense that can stop them, I mean, case in point, the Maulers, you know, sure, their their record wasn't impressive, but guess what? They were in the championship. Right. right? So. Mm-hmm. Right. And, they, and look, even more so, you have teams that – a lot of them did bring most of their good core players back. And so the advantage to defense is lessening as the years have gone on. So uh does help to have a completely 
a jacked roster. I'm going to call it a jacked defensive roster for yep. Houston. And I know, I know we, you, I know we kind of do, we do the things, and I hear a lot of roughneck stuff from you. But I will give the kudos in saying that they, they did build that end. It looks like on to me on paper and how it should be playing, barring injury. Mm-hmm. That one's going to be very formidable and scary to play every week, no matter yep. what happens on the other side of the ball. So, yeah, fifty man. You know, we'll do a little more deeper dive. I honestly. Uh, probably around the UFL, um, but we're going to do initial ones for these three while we have it because we have mm-hmm. them. Why not? I mean, sure. Let's get that talk. Speaking of which, let's move on down the line. DC Defenders are next on the list, and uh, I had a I had three that stood out uh, to me. So first off, is Sha- Quandre White, and it's not because he's been on the roster too long. He was actually just picked up last <laughs> last week mm-hmm. uh, because of the fact that they are thin at that position, but. White was let go, and to me that signals they're very comfortable with whoever they have behind uh, Abram Smith or who is to replace Abram Smith before White came in. And credit, you know, I think that was to see if maybe he gets a little, adds a little more juice uh, to them besides Cameron Harris or a Darius Hagens, uh, in particular maybe a Puka Williams, but honestly Harris and Hagens are the two that I'm looking at the most. And so looks like that did not come to be and so usually you don't see that usually that kind of happens where like you'll see a guy even in the nfl they'll bring him in for a spell see what they can get out of him real quick if they don't feel like it's going to be worth it they'll then move on really quickly and let him kind of go back into the into the free agent market and that's kind of what happened there uh i'm hoping white lands somewhere because he is pretty talented uh just needs to get another shot but to me that signals right away and honestly love to hear your thoughts I think that signals that they are comfortable with possibly a committee backfield or one of those two main guys taking over that bell cow if that is the case. No, I mean, that's what it feels like, right? These teams, again, they've been – this is our they, – they've had a couple weeks of training camp, but realistically, a lot of these coaches have played with these players. There's a lot of film that they have to work on to where if they're seeing the things that they were worried about in film even – they could say, okay, maybe maybe my coaching isn't going to fix this problem, or maybe we have the solution to this problem because this guy did, you know. So I mm-hmm. think these teams are really going to are are ready to roll into this season. Sure, I think there's going to be some teams that aren't as good as the others, but I think overall the competition is going to be tougher than what we've seen in the past iterations of these different spring leagues, which will be interesting to see how that results on the overall records at the end of the seasons, right? Are we right. going to get a, something like the stallions or the defenders, right? Where they're, you know, nine and one, eight and two, something like that. Um, I don't know uh, if they do, it could be based on luck and fluke. And, you know, quite honestly, we've talked about the kickers and sure they're, they're aiming for, you know, the, the kickoff, but, Gee, mm-hmm. you know the, that that point could come into play. Uh, although I anticipate a lot of a lot of these teams are going to go, um, you know, for that they're they're just going to go for the big points. But you know what? When you have the right. opportunity to get that three point field goal, or on a fourth down, and you might not want to try it, and that's going to either tie the game, put you up by one or two, and maybe there's a minute left, but you know you miss it. We're going to see some interesting (laughs) things come out of some seemingly strong teams just based on how the game is played. So that's what to me this I'm so excited to see in this season is really how we're going to see these two leagues gel. Right. Um, We usually have the one, two, three weeks where these teams are kind of coming together. Um, mm-hmm. And I think some of the teams will have that, and that could put them in a pos- position to lose the to miss the playoffs, because they're going to be against other like the Stallions. I feel like the Stallions, you know, I I honestly think people are are not giving them the credit they deserve in all instances. I know USFL fans are. Don't get me wrong, but I think there's some XFL fans that are kind of looking at them they're like, yeah, but they're the best team in the USFL. No, don't oh, count yeah, out no. Skip Holtz, man. That dude. That dude knows how to command a team. That dude knows how to put together a team. Zach Potter knows how to put together a team. <laughs> yes. I mean, that dude, yes. I'll say it now. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Like, it, it's only a matter of time before that guy's working in the NFL in some way, shape, or form. Uh, he quite honestly could end up being the youngest GM in NFL history. Uh, look at him now at, at the age he is, two championships under his belt. Mm-hmm. It's insane. So, 
again, it, it, it's going to be interesting to see how all of this comes together. And week five, I can't wait to talk about this at the halfway point. I, I can already give you my take on one team. Five and oh, of course, we're five and oh, we're the roughnecks. So there's there's my <laughs> preview for week five. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Uh, it's, it had to circle back. I'm not, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I, I knew I, somehow we went through three team teams. There. I, I know well, why know. it's partially it's Quandre white, but you know, mm-hmm. it's the thing. I just find it funny. Stick into it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> anyway, coming. some other defenders guys, <laughs> sorry. Some other defenders guys we got to bring up that caught my eye. Jazz Ferguson, a credit. This is more. Familiar name. Uh, he's been through the ringer in the XFL and you it, really the XFL and now the UFL for some time. Uh, primarily was with the Dallas Renegade or the then Dallas Renegades in 2020. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he was with the Defenders. He kind of re upped with them in 2023 when the XFL came back. Um, you know, the, the other reason I bring it up is I think DC's questions about the depth of receiving talent on this mm-hmm. roster because of, you know, Tom, who's not we've talked about this in the past and on ATU on Monday, mm-hmm. the depth and some of the chemistry will be really what is under the microscope here. Um, I'm not saying jazz Ferguson was really a, a, like an a grade option between these two on how they kind of read the field because, you know, Ferguson only caught one catch for 27 yards in 2023. So I'm not saying it was lighting the world on fire, you know, credit lucky Jackson, Chris Blair, they were killing it. But to have someone that was at least on the defenders roster last year be let go. Now, credit mm-hmm. that, again, signifies they are comfortable with who they have. You know, Kiki Cootie is and Chris Kiki Cootie is the big name receiver credit slot guy, but still the main one that I think most people have gravitated towards as someone that could be Tamu's main target this year. But, you know, going to have guys like Brandon Smith and Vincent Smith you have to prove themselves or step up. Luckily, you also get someone like a Chris Roland, who is a small guy, who's a small receiver. Maybe you can get into like four receiver packages. It helps out too. You know, veteran guy from the stars coming over. But, uh, you know, does bring questions because, like I said, Jazz was one of the veterans from last year's roster. That's what caught my eyes. Now he's gone. So mm-hmm. now it's a uh, pretty, pretty uh, new, new green greenhorn in the sense uh, people here, and they're going to roll with it. Yep. Of course. Yep. Well, I think coach is confident. Again, you know, I talked about Skip Holtz. Uh, you know, Reggie Barlow ain't ain't no joke himself over there. So, I, I think I think he's confident with what he's doing. And uh, I mean, time will tell when we get on the field, of course. But I wouldn't be too worried about the defenders. And you know what? The fans will tell them because they're either going to get a beer snake or they're going to get some lemons on the field. And uh, <laughs> I think uh, I think there's a lot oh, of yes. things that come into play with that. So, um, so. Well, we have one more on the defenders. Did we talk about Tim Ward? I'm yeah, sorry. no, I, I, I was making sure it didn't step on you. I'll tell you what, I, yeah. I, uh, I wonder. So, like, you got the lemons on the field for if, obviously, the opposing team or we've seen refs make mm-hmm. the fans mad. <laughs> I wonder if the lemons apply if the defenders play bad. We haven't really seen that instance happen. I, I mean, wouldn't they were doubt nine it. One last year, so I wouldn't doubt <laughs> it. I mean, I wouldn't doubt it. Did the Roughnecks play in DC? We'll find out then. <laughs> I tee you up. You just, <laughs> I, you know, I can't away. help myself. I'm sorry, guys. I know some people take it seriously, and I know I say I'm joking. I'm not, but maybe I am. Who knows? I'm just having fun. You're a passionate fan. There, look, everybody's got a passionate fan base. So, hey, enough to you. I've clearly I I display it on me every show. So it's not like I just do it a different way every show. Just, is how it is. Just imagine if we did this show in 2020 when the Roughnecks were undefeated. <laughs> oh my god. I was at, you If you imagine? go back to the shows then I actually was like I was trying and I'm not that I don't try now but I was like <laughs> Whoa, wait a minute. You know what I mean? It wasn't I think like you still I try. The character wasn't there. I mean, I was le- I was the ref, but I wasn't the ref that I am now, I'll tell you that much. But that's what happens when you get that first undefeated oh, season man. under your belt, whether it's short season or not, you know, there's there's a certain luxury that you get used to in life and that's it. 12 and 0, rough them up. Um <laughs> I'm just I just was going to laugh. If I see someone in the comments put the ref 2024, I don't try. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I kid. man. I, I kid. I kid. 
Anyway, we do have one more that was on the list. Um, and Tim Ward, Tim Ward linebacker for the defenders. Now he is one of the fortunate ones. This is part of the reason why I'm listing him. Uh, he is one of the only ones from today. Actually, he's the only one from today's cuts that got claimed by a different roster. He is going to the Brahmas. Now credit the Brahmas still have to do cut downs themselves, but, uh, yeah. I'll be frank. I mean, unless this is a cruel joke that you pick someone off off waivers to then get cut two days later, Tim's probably going to be playing there. I don't know in what capacity, but uh, you know, do this is another this is another guy that you know he came into the spring scene late last year. He actually was a roughneck last season. Mm -hmm. uh, joined up and was put on the reserve list on the twenty eighth of April during that last year. Uh, so he's kind of been looking to get more action in the league anyway since the merger. Um, but yeah, no, he's one of the he's the only one so far that has gotten claimed. And again, he just uh, do want to see, say that it'll be interesting that though you're cut, that doesn't mean the other seven teams are going to let you slide by. You know, some mm -hmm. teams they still hope that you happen to kind of land on waiver wire or they'll make moves to acquire said waiver wire person. Uh, Tim is definitely to me. Look, if you're picking someone up on waiver wire this late in the game, uh, not guaranteed, but I'd say that signifies your job is safe. It would, um, feel, yeah, it seems. Otherwise, so. that's extremely cruel to pick someone up on waivers. I, it doesn't happen like that usually in, the, in football. But I'm just saying, if it happened like that, I'd be like, hey, we need to talk about this because that's kind of, mm -hmm. it's kind of messed up if it did happen like that two days later. Ah, uh, now we're gonna cut you as well. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Yep. So yeah, you know, kind of a good story for him. Uh, so we. We're talk we just talked about the third best team in Texas. We might as well talk about the second best team in Tux Texas, the Renegades. Ooh, hot take. And actually, but, I mean, I'm they do have the trophy, so, uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, that was a fluke. I don't know what happened in that game. I don't know. The refs must have been blind. Something something was off. Something was something was off that day. Even, even Stoops knew it. I don't know how the hell that was, happened. Yeah, neither do I. It was so off that the league moved the coaching staff to San Antonio to <laughs> yeah. try and spark something They don't else trust up. it. Something's up. <laughs> Something's awry. And now if the Renegades win on some – oh, come on now. Anyway, so we, Christian Sam, though, I was kind of surprised to see that name on the list because he's another one of these guys that's been a staple when it comes to spring football over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, but, again, kind of stressing on this is the type of competition – uh, that we have going into this season with this league. Uh, and one thing, I know I joke, I got the jokes, but I will say Arlington starting off the season this year looks much better than what they did starting out the season last year. You know, and considering they have that trophy under their belt, I mean, they do have a little bit of an advantage in that as if they were able to pull it off last year with a rocky start. With a, with a much better start under their belt. And again, Luis Perez starting, uh, you know, coming back from the beginning of the season this year, not coming over from, you know, the Vipers uh, halfway mm -hmm. through or a little bit over. I mean, they, they could be they could be a team to to watch out for. And, and, you know, to a certain extent, they have a little bit of a home team advantage in the fact that training camp is there. All the teams are housed there. Uh, I mean, that argument was kind of dismissed last year with the Stallions when they still won the championship when, you know, all the games weren't at their their home stadium. But, you know, maybe there's something to that. Uh, seemingly a little bit less travel, you would you would think. Right. Um, I maybe don't know. A little, a little a tad bit. I mean, look, you know, I, I think so far through camp, you know, I'll be honest with you, like some people have said that us and other outlets have put the Renegades pretty low for mm -hmm. given that they are. A returning champ we have them at six for our uh conglomerate votes and by the way new new power rankings coming out this monday uh for atu so we'll be talking about those on atu sh too so don't don't you worry about that but uh i think overall like for the renegades cuts let's go through those really quick so yeah you said christian sam devin darrington running back and then marquise lucas i bring up because he was uh former seventh round seventh rounder pick for the usfl uh, for the breakers and he was brought in and lineman it's a very competitive space um, not to mention that with Garrett McGinn being knocked out you know you kind of have to you know find extra people and kind of the I would say uh, extra supporting staff that you can have that are flexible across the board uh, 
I mean, outside of McGinn, don't get me wrong, the Renegades on paper, uh, offensive line wise, you know, we don't talk as much about that. You know, again, it's not a glorious position in terms of like what we see on tape, but like when you got guys like Cameron, when you got Jake Lucina, Cameron Hunt knocking things down in the in the middle on center and guard um, for those options, uh, like guys like Adrian Ely, who I brought up in the past on this show, or Bobby Evans, like. Yeah, Garrett McGinn getting lost sucks, but those replacements are really good. And I think in particular, because Lucas is a tackle, that's another reason I wanted to bring it up is because with McGinn out, you have to find who is your best of the best at that spot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's kind of a cut down piece and someone that did have some good prospects coming in. Um, And again, it's a cutthroat nature of the business. And that's what you're seeing here. But uh, I do agree with you, like, Arlington the more I've looked I think there's promise I just I don't know like maybe it's just the rest of the league makes me thrown off because I think that there are teams that do jump them Mm -hmm. in terms of some of the overall talent on their rosters like defensively I think it's decent enough like I'm not saying it's Houston level paper on names on paper but like still you got guys like a Donald Payne over there and company or Gene Harris are going to be locking things down but offensively, the more I've been kind of looking and reading in, I'm like, you know what? If certain things play out like last year, this ain't too bad. Again, you still got Sal Canella, late edition coming back. Mm-hmm. You know, Luis Perez, he is starting. They've already made sure that, hey, you damn well know he's going to be starting week one. Uh, and then I, everyone keeps not either bringing up very limitedly or not, but Deontay Burnett is really the big centerpiece that's not talked as much because Sal Canella exists. Mm-hmm. That's someone that I'm fascinated to see what he does with a new roster or a new place to get the ball thrown to uh, in the Leeds press. And if they can get Dave, Davion Smith going, he was not he was not the Davion Smith that we all remember from the Vipers days, but if they can mm-hmm. find a way to get him going or see if either Letty Brown or Day-Day Hunter can take up that explosiveness and make that run game just a bit better, you know, it was already a championship roster, but then it makes it where I think we get past some of the uh, pr- training camp feels about this team and how we feel they're down lower in the rungs, if that makes any sense. Your thoughts. Mm-hmm. I really want to hear all, what you think, you know, being the second best team in Texas uh, well, that's for the, yourself. I mean, the only thing they got going for them really is that they don't have to play the Roughnecks twice this season. So at oh, minimum, yeah. they only have one loss under their belt from us, right? And so then you really only have to look at the other nine games and kind of match up where you work best. And I'll, I'll be honest, like I said, it kind of goes back to what I was saying before. They At minimum, they have a a more well-rounded team at the beginning of the season. Now, <laughs> on the opposite side of the same coin, I feel like all of the other teams probably have a solid, well-rounded team going into this as well. Um, I I think some are better than others. Some are going to have to prove themselves. And maybe I'm looking at the Brahmas. Maybe I'm not. The one thing that I'll give the Brahmas, I know I'm switching Texas teams here. The one thing that I, I won't count the Brahmas out on, and this is why I even hesitate to say they're the third best team in Texas, is not even just Wade Phillips, but A.J. Smith. I mean, from he, he, to me, he is the offensive coordinator to beat when it comes to spring leagues. Uh, so I wouldn't count him out and anybody that's kind of listening to his command as he's sitting up in the box uh, playing Madden up there. Uh, but even, uh, you know, when we look at the, uh, at the Renegades, they've even made some changes on the coaching side. Last year, maybe to their hindrance, they, had, they were maybe overcoached. They I had think very so much many to their coaches, hindrance. Right? I'm very much in that belief with you, mm. uh, for sure. Because was Chuck. See, that's what's interesting is like Chuck was more. It sounded last year Chuck Long was more like the kind of like the one B, mm-hmm. but now he's the one. Now he's the the A, the only guy there. Yep. This time, yep. offense coordinator. So that and that'll be interesting to see too, right? There's there's a lot of kind of moving pieces to these. Uh, and again, when it comes to Houston, I, I'm, I'm all locked in, if anything, because they're the underdog. I think pe- if, mm-hmm. I don't know why, but people are looking at the Roughnecks like they're not going to deliver this year. And uh, I don't know, five and oh, last year we started four, or five and oh, the first year we started four and oh, last year made it to the playoffs. Yeah, you can make the argument. Well, this is technically the gamblers and not the Roughnecks. But you know what? Manifest Destiny was always on our side anyway. We were already going to go all in as the gamblers. So we might as well do it as the Roughnecks. 
So that's my take on the season. I give it a Clip shot. it. Give it a shot. <laughs> We'll have more fur- thorough breakdowns on the ro- on the rosters uh, as we move forward next week, especially big week given its lead up week to the season. So we will break down more of these rosters, especially on our Friday show, uh, and you know get you ready for spring stock, which would mm-hmm. be the following day. Uh, so definitely stay tuned for that. But more cuts are along the way. Got five more teams that are going to be doing cut downs and. Uh, it's not going to be any easier. Now, credit, it's not as drastic as the first round, but still, I mean, just keep in mind, we're talking like we're talking eight players a roster still for the most part. Got to get dropped off uh, and uh, dispersed somewhere else or hopefully find their way elsewhere. And uh, we do want to reflect that much like how we did with our X account today. Look, give support to these guys. They, you know, it's a tough time. Coaches will say the same thing right now. Um, and you hope they land on their feet. Uh, I'll echo what we put on Twitter. Every dog has its day. Just make sure you're ready for that day and the rest ahead because it's going to be coming to you sooner than you think. Which actually I think is kind of a good segue into our next segment here, which we it's been a while, guys, but we all know mm-hmm. you love the speculation zone. I love the speculation zone. Zach, I'm pretty sure I, I, you I love, really the, love speculation the speculation zone. Yes. Yes. So you know what? How about this? How about we had right into the speculation zone sign us up welcome to the speculation zone everybody's favorite zone my favorite zone the speculation zone and you know there's been many times where speculation has become confirmation (laughs) and i'll be honest i don't know if this is one of them i'll be honest well i'll just start it out with that but before we jump into, well, let's just jump into it. We, we talked about it a little bit on this past Monday on Around the UFL. Again, another reason you should be subscribed. You really, Click the bell. Yeah. It builds morale. It lets you know when we go live, which is every Monday and upcoming next week for Springstock episode 80, the whole deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we talked about Greg Williams, who, if you're not sure, you should be sure, the defensive coordinator of the D.C. Defenders. Well, he's got a radio show with his son, right? And... I'll be honest, Zach, radio, funny enough, in these interviews, and this is a little bit different because it's not an interview, it's his own radio show, but these have always seemed to give us like little glimpses into things that could be coming. I, I, I'm i looking at you, Coach Flip. I'm it's looking at you. It's always overlooked. That's the yeah. thing. These pla- that platform is always overlooked. People don't look for it as much. And so you get stuff like this later on when like there's a video portion, which a lot of these stations are – teams do and i think this is more it's more like a show raise show slash podcast but you get the point like Mm -hmm. stuff like this gets looked over until it's like someone finally digs it or is like again the crazies out there yep we we look for keywords we look for things that kind of pop up in the search engines and someone happens to grab pull and slap it onto uh onto the socials this time though it actually was the official account so a little different Mm -hmm. but uh i digress you know radio as you said can go on does keep bringing things that we get to uh, discuss not that we don't always see on the video angles. It doesn't yeah. always come up that way. A hundred percent. Right. And this is one that, you know, people have already been speculating on. People have been pondering, going to the rumor mill, but according to Greg Williams, he's, he's talking about the U S uh, the UFL. I apologize. There's a good likelihood that they could expand going into as early as next year. That's where, I mean, we'll get in, we'll talk about the details and then we'll get into our thoughts on this. But, Mm -hmm. you know, according to him, we could be looking at 12 teams in 2025. And what's even crazier to me is 16 teams shortly after. Now, I know there's a lot of. Yeah, (laughs) that that's where I hit pause is. Wait a minute. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, there was a lot of fans that were really hoping with this merger that we would keep all 16 teams. And quite honestly, if there was ever a time that we were going to see a 16 team league, I think that would have been it. You had all the rosters. You had all the coaches. I mean, quite you had three television networks. If you if depending on if you move the season, NBC still could have been in. So to me, I'm with you, Zach. Whoa, 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 whoa. And even 12 as early as next year seems crazy to me. Do I want to see it? Hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Same. I want to see it. Uh, but I think I said this on Monday. I think if and this is a big if we do see expansion next year the year after even season three of the ufl i feel like 10 is the more attainable number to aim for 
nine gets difficult, but I mean, Canada has a odd number of teams, so the, it, it wow. does work out. Um, the other piece of this that we haven't talked about that uh, I don't know if we talked about this on Monday is expanded teams. Seems like you almost have a, ha, need to have an expanded schedule unless you don't play every, you know what I mean? Then it, then it gets goofy where some teams aren't even playing another team in that season, which isn't unheard of with the NFL, but that's, yeah, that's do crazy. you do that with something this small? I don't know. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, Zach season two, do you think we get expansion? We'll start there. I want to believe we do. Um, mm-hmm. Given that I look, a lot of it was on the rumor mill here, but there was a lot of this like small scale rumor talk about how, when they were negotiating and talking with the federal government, and the trade commission that, you know, the trade commission wanted more teams. The league wanted to save costs and that there's supposedly this contingency plan where maybe they upscale next year, but they had to downscale for year one, but they have to promise that they're going to upscale. If that's the case, then, I mean, it's a foregone conclusion, but I think you'd only do 10 just to mitigate costs. Cause 12 to mm-hmm. me, look 12, I mean, you're adding 50% more to your entire portfolio. And I'm not saying that you can't find, you can find players first off. So players aren't the problem. Like I, no one's saying this, but just, just yeah. to reiterate in case someone thinks that, Players are never the problem. You are going to find good quality talent that will play. Hell, you'll probably find talent that's in lower levels that are playing right now, specifically arena and indoor, that are going to get those opportunities and jump up. Or the latest college classes that are guys that they just want in because they know it's there. My concern, and you and I have echoed this on this show multiple times because it, it gets talked about, it's the business. We talk about the business a lot on here because spring football and sports versus business, but spring football business sense wise, that's the part that is the biggest challenge and has not always been where it needs to be. And to get to expansion next year, unless it's mandatory, which again, if it's mandatory, well, if they have a season two, they're kind of going to get locked in if they made that, or they're going to have to uh, reconvene with the certain F with the the FTC about that Mm -hmm. at some point. But if they're going to 10, my question then goes, great. Um, are we selling any of these? Right. That's the next step. You you want me to be, you want me to be thinking that this is real that they're going to do this? They have to take costs off the plate from the league office. That's the main hurdle to doing expansion to me. You can add more teams and keep doing the hub, but remember your costs go up. You know that's that's the thing. And I'm not saying that businesses can't do that. You know, mm-hmm. yes, there there are businesses in Silicon Valley that take losses every year in hopes of profitability. But football, you don't have that runway. You know, football is a is arguably the most expensive sport in the world. Uh, it's one of the top ones to run. I mean, some will say NASCAR because it's, you, but no, like talking manpower wise, mm-hmm. so, you know, health and safety and you know, the equipment, you name it, travel. It's one of the most expensive sports to run in the world. You have to have someone buy some teams to then recoup and redirect costs to allow you to be flexible. That's what's my hurdle. Now, Greg's pretty confident and credit you know, most of the times in years past, if we hear from a coach, you know, we go, oh, well, you know, they're, they're connected with the league. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it makes sense. But keep in mind, we also went through last year, like lead up to this. Mm-hmm. Oh, and yeah. I mean, I don't know, man, like it's kind of the league office and who knows what. I don't know if I can fully buy into the the team number thing, because I think you only get so much leaked down. And I feel like it's a lot of hypotheticals at Mm -hmm. times right so i'm very like standoffish on this because i I really need to see some news come out that you're seeing like interested buyers or something um that will come out to to the woodwork i know we kind of like joked about fred smith last year a little bit but Mm -hmm. like that's the kind of guy like hey you you have someone like a freddie come out here and buy memphis up then okay cool well you took off an entire roster's costs unless there was a dumb a pseudo dumb uh i would say provision made about the cost structure you know you take that off your plate that's my hurdle i bet you have a similar take knowing your business acronym or Mm -hmm. business uh you know background in ways but that's what i'm looking at like show me where you're taking the costs away 
and then I'm like, cool, we got more teams. Because if you don't do that, I'm going to be sitting here really doing my uh, collar pull because that's that will make me nervous. You're adding yeah. extra, and then you have to hope to add extra revenue coming in. The cash right. flow has got to make sense at that point. For sure. Yeah, you got, either got to hope for some money on the TV side. But again, if Fox is half of your broadcast, they own the league. So there's really no money moving in either direction other than the advertisements. Mm -hmm. uh, the ESPN side, they're already locked into the deal. So I don't know how that works. If you have to extend your schedule, does that do those games just end up on Fox to where it becomes a non-negotiable? Uh, but like you said, it's not even just the rosters, the stadiums, right? Those are that's the thing that's going to get you, yeah, man. You got to you release those too. Stadiums, you know, insurance, uh, even the travel. Even if you do the the hub where they're all in Arlington, you still got to get them and the other team to these games, right? So there's planes and maybe buses and I don't know what we'll see. Uh, but to me, I mean, if we are going to expand and if it is maybe ten teams and not twelve, I think we talked about this Monday. It feels like. New Orleans is probably a good option. They were already talking to Yulman and some other uh, stadiums. Very They're, much. If any, you know, maybe not the closest to Arlington, but it's three and a half, four hours from Houston, so you tack another three hours. I mean, uh, you know, it ain't comfortable, but you could throw it on a bus. That could be a bus trip right there instead of a mm -hmm. plane. You know, maybe that cuts down some of the cost. Um, who's the other team? Only time will, t will tell. I would love it to be Canton. Just rebrand the Maulers. Just put them in Canton. I think people would show up. But you know what? I'm not the guy behind the money here. Well, uh, you're, you're revisiting with the, even with Greg's with the clip from Greg Williams and in, in mm -hmm. his show in a show about this, where it's uh, you know they <laughs> the whole thing starts off asking about Cleveland, you know that yeah. in the Metro there. You know, I think if you're talking teams to come back, like I know there's going to be that contingent of fans that say, well, well Seattle, and it's like. <sighs> This is where we stop and pause. It, mm -hmm. The reason Seattle's not even in this, because the brand obviously has fans. Mm -hmm. But again, think about the business. You have to get some people out west to make that make sense. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's what's the holdup. I, I agree that I think Seattle should still be looked at, but with that, some people, because it, it is, there are adamant diehards that wish that never went away. But you got to, the business sense gotta, has got to be there. And it's not there right now. So until yep. you get that, like like the San Diego idea, like say, in credit, I would want the breakers first, but say they did San Diego and Seattle in a duo in a dual combo mm -hmm. for the ten teams. Okay, maybe we can talk because at least you have like two out there that aren't too bad. Credit you're still flying teams out, but I mean, you know, there is at least a path you're setting for yourself in a nationwide map, but as you and I have said in previous shows, there's a reason why everyone is kind of around or east of the Mississippi River. Mm -hmm. It's because that's kind of the Fox model that they picked with the USFL, and they're sticking with that in this merger in a way. Yep. You know, so yeah, that's what it is. I, just hey, if they get to ten, great. But I, I need to see a lot more than Greg talking because the financial stuff to me is what holds me up from fully jumping off the diving board on that word is all I yep. can tell you. Yep. And I mean, we got to get through this season. Not that I think that they're not going to, I don't think it's the most be crucial an AAF part where they're not going to make it through the season, but you know, you, you got to hit your marks. You got to, uh, are, is everybody tuning in, right? Because you're, you are going to lose some big markets. You, you don't have a New York team, mm -hmm. right? You don't have the Seattle market and mm -hmm. sure. There's going to be some people that tune in from those markets. There's, there's the diehards and there's the crazies. Don't get me wrong. But a good majority of Seattle Sea Dragon fans are not going to be turning in, tuning in. I, I maybe they will. Prove me wrong. I hope they do, though. I hope they do. I just don't anticipate it. Right? You, you know what I remember from a uh, 2022 USFL season when they did the uh, simulcasts and like the opening games? Mm -hmm. uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Dayton, Ohio, were yeah. like the two big one, two of the biggest markets that watched that opening week, and. It's kind of crazy because, like, Tulsa, it's funny. They're, like, the IFL's there. Their team actually sells really well. Mm -hmm. It's just not, you know, I'm not saying these are markets. I just find it fascinating how demographics seem to work where it's like, look at these cities. You don't yep. understand why they're tuning in, but somehow they hit and, ba and were bangers. And, like, Ohio, it just shows they consistently, every iteration, it seems like an Ohio city has come up and been a hit. Like, uh, I think 2020, week one, Columbus, Ohio. Was like one of the was one of the markets that watched that opening DC Seattle game the most, mm -hmm. 
they were like top five and people were like, what the heck? And it's like, it's just, it's Ohio there. It's a football state, you know, it's like Texas in that fact. Exactly. Well, it's the we talk about the, of football. We they talk about football. two of the meccas of football in the, in the U S Texas and well, where it began in Ohio, you know, mm-hmm. and Ohio state's out there. Canton, Ugh, Cleveland. God, I mean, don't it just makes me. sense. I, I know <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing my, Michigan go oh blue championship shirt right now. Another undefeated team that I rooted for. May I remind everybody? <laughs> I, my favorite, my, I think my favorite thing would be this year be like, Ohio State is so down bad they had to go and hire another head coach. <laughs> That's right. We're going to scare him out too. Uh, so that was the speculation zone. I figure we have one other story, and this is kind of a fun one to end off on. Um, oh, yeah, a little bit. I don't know about you, Zach. I'm a Curb Your Enthusiasm fan. It's the final season. I haven't started watching it yet, so no spoilers. I like to wait until the season's over just so I can, like, binge everything. Sure. Right? Especially with this. I I mean, I don't go on the internet enough on that kind of that corner of the world to get spoilers on what I'm missing. But, uh, you know, it's funny because he, he, uh, uh, Larry David, he he makes a few appearances on the Rich Eisen show. Actually, Mm -hmm. the last time I heard him talking to them, they were, he was talking about wrestling, like what's the deal with pro wrestling and this and that. And he kind of went off on a tirade and, uh, funny enough, he, he joined the show again this week and he talked about the UFL, the United football league. That's And to me, I mean, Larry David's one of these guys to where it doesn't matter politically anything. Everybody kind of likes Larry David, right? He's got the meme thing, you know, like Larry David, that show is so damn good. Uh, but he joined the Rich Eisen show. He started talking about the UFL. And honestly, I didn't know this about them, but apparently he's got this thing where he wants to get rid of field, uh, field goal posts, goal posts in football. And I don't know, Zach, appa- who knows if this is bit or truth, but apparently, according to Larry David, he even had a phone call with the one of the owners of the UFL, Dwayne, a little guy, the Dwayne The Rock Johnson. You might have heard okay. of him. Uh, about this thing. And, uh, you know, it's funny in the interview, he said, you know, I thought he might actually do it. I could see the rock. I, so I could actually see this is like, oh man, that's a great idea that oh, you want to show up at a game. No, 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 no. What can't we just get rid of the goalposts? I, I could see it already happening. Uh, thoughts on, I mean, from the publicity factor, I think this is great for the UFL. Uh, so thoughts on that, but I'm curious thoughts should, should, they get rid of the goalposts. I mean, they don't have extra point kicks. What you know? Maybe you, you you fashion up something for field goals, or you just get rid of them entirely. I don't know. Maybe he's on to something here. Well, clearly he is uh, picking the right league, given the fact yeah. that he, you know, in the same interview, by the way, he and again part of the conversation where he's saying, you know, I I called uh I called Dwayne up, and so he's doing that. And he apparently brought up, like, we should get rid of extra points. And he's like, I was surprised to see that they had already done that <laughs> anyway. Like, he's like, I brought this idea up. It's like, oh, and, and Dwayne goes, oh, we already are doing that. And he, I was like, oh. <laughs> so he was very pleasantly happy about, about this. And, you know, I had to revisit the context because this isn't the first time he's brought this up. Clearly, Rich implies this mm-hmm. in his clip. And it's because he brought this up two years ago on Rich's show. Um, and they've done this where he's he's been on the show multiple times uh, in the past. And they've done this like commissioner for a day bit with him. And he said the same thing. He would he would ban the field goal posts <laughs> and just make it just only plays to score from, from offensive possession or defensive possession. Um, and it's fascinating. And I think... Uh, I think it's what's funny is is that it's the most random natural exposure to the UFL. You know, mm-hmm. yes, it's Rich Eisen. He is a football centric commentator, but Eisen has been a sports commentator in general outside of football for years. Remember, he, he was with he was with Sports Center for in the golden years in the nineties mm-hmm. with ESPN, and it's just a fit. Like it's perfect. It's perfect random branding that is open exposure, and you know, and I think for those like like myself, where I'm like, look, I'm not a rock fan or anything, or I'm not like mm-hmm. the celebrity owner fan guy. I just wanted to watch sports. This helps with me continuing to do that because like name dropping the rock. Remember, like you, you drop the rocks name in a conversation. Someone's going to post it on the internet. And if it's toyed with the UFL, they talk about the UFL because of the rock now. And it's Larry David, who is one of, 
anytime he gets a soundbite on a show, he's one of the most talked about comedians on our planet and one of the most famous comedians and comic creators on this planet. Uh, it's just, it's good. It's good exposure for the league, natural exposure as it was put, uh, by one of the quote tweets I was reading about this. Um, and it, it helps, you know, I, I think it's a funny clip. I, I find it hilarious. David, Larry, David, just I'm with you. Mm -hmm. Um, unless you just don't like the style of Larry David's comedy or Jerry Seinfeld, where it's like this, like this New Yorker style, that's what they call it. Or like New yeah. York comedy. Then, I mean, you know, you're going to have a laugh. He, he, it's a great, it's a great clip and it's a great, it's almost like to me, it's the perfect follow-up, not only for Eisen's fan base, because if you've been watching since two years ago, it's hilarious that that's come back, but it's also the perfect tie in at the right time. We're again, the show aired yesterday as of, as of this show dropping today as we're recording. Mm -hmm. So under 10 days and you have this random clip pop off like this on the internet, it, it's the U, the UFO office has, and the social teams in particular have to be super giddy that that was even name dropped and that they get oh, to yeah. have that out in the ether without them doing anything, by the way, nothing on their end, just listening uh, to Larry David talk UFL. Some hundred percent, a hundred percent. Yeah. You got to love it. You got to love the exposure. I love Larry David as it is. Uh, and maybe, maybe we'll see that Larry David cameo in, in one of these UFL games. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> You got a, you got speaking, curbing your enthusiasm. You got a favorite moment. Oh man. You put me mine's, on the spot mine's the here. tent. <laughs> mine's the no, tent episode. I got one. It's the, it's the spite shop. The, the doesn't he have like a spite restaurant or a spite, I, uh, like coffee yes, shop? Yes. That's, I, that's me. The spite yes. shop. I love that so much. That is so amazing. It's Larry David. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. The episode that the, feels the like something store. I would do. Yeah. <laughs> the spite, the spite store. store. That is so amazing. They wouldn't let him use the the bathroom or something like that. So he just opened a coffee shop next door. Yeah. Or he didn't <laughs> like their bathrooms. I don't know. You know, Larry David problems. <laughs> yeah. The spite oh, store. That that's, is that's glorious. <laughs> Uh, the, the, curb your enthusiasm, man. I, I, I haven't. I, I do watch from time to time. I really do need to catch up. Just random skew, but like, mm -hmm. you know. Besides that, like, I'm a huge Seinfeld fan. I love Jerry. I love Seinfeld. It's one of those timeless shows. Just I know it's not football we're talking, but like, sure. you know, if we're talking comedy, like Larry David, man, keep on being you, dude. You're, you make, you make the you make the world of comedy and us smile every day. I mean, shoot, man, this is the same guy that freaking uh what was it like shook elmo on 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 Net network tv on the today show this year yeah because like, Elmo tried to say something he's like ah <laughs> elmo i that was another viral clip i forgot about until just now yeah yeah, yeah. that happened this, that just happened the last few months man i'm gonna miss curb your enthusiasm i like i said i haven't watched this season at all i'm sure it's probably not going to be the best season but it's still going to be a season of curb your enthusiasm so I, I once it's over i'll watch it we'll give an update maybe on this show at it, uh, next off season off topic this is one of our last off season off topics before we get into the season where we're in season in topic Anyway, mm -hmm. anyway, thought that was interesting. Fun way to kind of wrap up the show, but quick reminder on a couple things. We're one week away, almost, but basically one week away from Pretty the much. UFL kickoff. We're one week away from Spring Stock 3. March 30th, join us, Arlington, Texas, Lot L, outside of Choctaw Stadium, 9 a.m. Central. We're going live with the Spring Stock 3 with the biggest tailgate of the spring. And like I said, if you can't make it, join us live on YouTube. We'll have the link to Spring Stock 3 here soon. So make sure you go and set the reminder because if you're not going to be there in person, you might as well check it out online. Uh, but for the folks in person, we have our sponsors, Vintage Varsity there, which is also the Yacht Club. So we're going to have shirts day one and two different ones so if you're going to be at both events come and get them special collectors there's not a lot but they're going to be there good times good guests and good giveaways and like i said day two we're throwing the swing is on the tesla and heading to houston specifically rice stadium to go see the roughnecks put that one in the one two and oh 
Oh, yeah. In our 12 and 0 season against those showboats. And I'm sorry, Vintage Varsity, but you know, I had to say it. But you, here's the thing if we lose, you're going to be there seeing me cry in person. I'm almost done, puppy dog. See, oh. we almost, it's, it's about time to cut it off. Any last thoughts, Zach, before we head into the sunset here? No, I think we're, I think we're good. My own, my only question is, does, uh, <laughs> Does the, does the dog rival the cat appearances we've had on ATU? Uh, yeah, of course, because my dog's the best. See, the so cat, think- my cat won't come on the podcast. My dog, most of the time, my dog's taking up all my foot space. But she got tired of taking up my foot space. And she, she heard the outro to the podcast. So she was like, okay, good. I, I get know, to get up right now. I, I don't she even knows. care how bad of a joke this is. Tiny Panthers on ATU and rough them up the dog. Rough dog. Rough I like it. I is like on it. For us on the yes. UFO podcast. I will end the show show just like that. My <laughs> piece. I leave it at the puns. I'll take it. Hey guys. One week. One week away, episode 80. One week away from kickoff and one week away from Springstock 3. Until then, sign you up. <laughs>